Not all brake controllers are created equally. In today's video, we're gonna be installing the Red Arc Electronics Tow Pro Elite. This is the latest version of the Tow Pro Elite. This is a hidden brake controller that keeps you from killing your knees. This video is sponsored by Red Arc Electronics. They provided us with the Tow Pro Elite so that we can do an install video and a review in the 2015 Toyota 4Runner. In the box, you're gonna find two wiring harnesses. The first one is going to go from the control box to your vehicle's wiring. The second one is going to go from the control box up to the control knob itself. It's pretty easy to see which one's which. Small control knob one has very small pins to go into the control knob. You're going to want to leave this detached because, well, you need to assemble the control knob. Also in the box is this universal dash plate. This is if you want to drill a hole and actually put it in. but. We're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to use a dash plate that's actually specific to our Toyota. I put the Toyota ones here because most people that follow me are Toyota people. But if you contact Red Arc, they actually have dash plates for, well, a lot of vehicles. The Tow Pro Elite does come with an excellent manual, and I suggest you check that out for more specific instructions. But I'm just going to show you what I did. The install of this brake controller is mostly by the manual. However, I ended up making a mistake on my end and ordering the wrong part. So the harness that I got, while it says that it's for the Tacoma and the Tundra, it's not for the 4Runner. The TPH021 is the correct wiring harness for the Toyota 4Runner. The TPH015 is the correct wiring harness for just the Tacoma and the Tundra. So don't get that mixed up. In the interest of time, since I had my truck already apart, I decided to go ahead and just solder in the correct connector on the end of the harness for the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is assemble the control knob assembly and the dash plate. Once you've got the control knob in the dash plate, you'll put this clear kind of nut in there and that passes the LED light through to the control knob itself. Once you've got that assembled, you wanna put the control knob onto the actual control knob shaft you want to make sure the orientation is so that you can tell what setting you have it on. Now we can start taking the forerunner apart. The first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of the uh, floor mat, obviously, since that blocks a whole lot of the access to the entire area that we're trying to get into. Next, we're going to want to remove the door sill panel. You can grab from the front on the inside and just kind of pop it up. You want to work your way back. Like most automotive panels, these have little clips that pop into the actual metal of the vehicle. In the very back, they actually have two little pieces that uh, end up going into the plastic of the door frame itself. Next, we're gonna wanna remove the outer kick plate. Now this one is badly damaged in my vehicle because I've been in and out of this panel a lot. But there's a little plastic piece right next to the false pedal that you'll wanna kinda unscrew. That's this thing right here. Now for most undamaged Toyota 4Runners, you can actually grab the entire plate from the back and pull it back, but mine just kind of pops out. The clips are damaged, it is what it is. This 10 millimeter bolt holds on the lower dash assembly. To get the right side of the lower dash assembly out, you'll actually need to pull the panel off of the air conditioning controls. If you pull that piece towards you, it just pops right off. It has a little lip behind it that keep you from being able to move any further. The other side of this lower dash panel can be accessed by pulling this little tab out and there's another 10 millimeter bolt here. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and unbolt that and then you can remove the entire panel by pulling it forward. You don't need to take it all the way off, you just need to get it so that you can access the stuff behind it. I did take mine all the way off, which means that you need to take the parking brake assembly out. I don't recommend that. Once the lower panel is removed, you'll still have the airbag down here. Just leave that where it's at, and let's focus on this right side panel on the steering column. It just pops right off, just with a little tug and a little pull, and you don't need to remove the lower panel. It just makes things easier to get to. So once we have that panel off, we can remove the blank, but you'll notice this little empty area right here. That's actually for the limited model on the 2015s, where the sensor goes for, well, the automatic climate control. Yeah, I don't have that. Once you have that blank out, we can go ahead and put in the control knob and the dash insert. It's just gonna snap right in. Be sure to make sure that it's going in straight. You'll notice here, I kind of have a little bit of an angle. It needs to be in straight, otherwise it's not gonna snap all the way in. 
Now comes the fun part. We're gonna take the main harness from the Red Arc brake controller and plug it into the brake controller harness that's actually in the Toyota 4Runner. We can tell that Toyota didn't really expect us to tow with the 4Runner because this thing is really hard to get to. It's very far up there. But once you get a hold of it, it's pretty easy to line up the actual harness that comes with the Red Arc and just plug it in. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I actually had to have three cameras set up just so that I could see the thing. But if you know what you're looking for with the main harness coming out, it is there and you can just reach up and find it. Now we actually need to get to the heart of the matter and plug in the actual control box. It's easy to remove the right side kick panel just by giving a little tug on it until it pops out of the center console panel and then pull it straight back and the whole thing comes to you. Now, if you get down low enough, you can see the accelerator pedal, the brake pedal, and the climate control coils. You wanna avoid piercing any of these or hitting them with anything, which is why that panel was there. Now, I chose this area because if I can pull the carpet back, I can actually get to the body itself and mount my control module to the body, which means that it's not going to move, it's not going to shift unless the body of the vehicle actually shifts. This thing can be mounted in any position, any direction. It just needs to be firmly mounted to the vehicle so that it doesn't move on its own. So don't be zip tying this to a wiring harness. This needs to be mounted in a way that it can tell when the vehicle is either in acceleration or deceleration and in what direction. In the end, I actually pulled the carpet all the way back and mounted the Tow Pro Elite control box right in front of the air conditioning heater that goes underneath the seat. I did go ahead and tap the ground a little bit further back on the center console. Now once you've got that put in place, you'll need to go ahead and run the cable up to the control knob itself and then put all the panels back together and you should be good to go. I hope this video was helpful in getting this installed or at least finding out if you want to get this installed. It's really not a hard task to do and you can do it in the space of a little less than an hour. If you have any questions or you did something different than we did, please feel free to leave a comment down below and as always, we will try to read them and answer them as soon as possible. If you like this video, give it a like and if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe, we've got more to come. This is Mark with Trailer Sale Productions and we ask that you be kind, be curious and go explore.